We're here with Oculus VR at CES talking to Nate Mitchell. I'm here to try it out and see how great it is. And Nate's going to walk us through a little bit about what Oculus has done over the past year to really make this one of the best products out there and potentially a game changer for virtual reality and for a lot of other technologies. Like you said, at CES this year, we're debuting the Crystal Cove prototype, which is a new feature prototype of the Oculus Rift, sort of mm -hmm. on the path to the consumer version. Okay. And the Crystal Cove prototype features two key new breakthroughs positional tracking and low persistence display. Mm -hmm. So positional tracking is pretty easy to explain. Um, positional tracking is really adding three new degrees of freedom to the mm -hmm. way that you can interact with the VR environment. So with the original Oculus Dev Kit and every prototype that you've tried mm -hmm. up until this point, if you drop in, we track your head's orientation very, very precisely in real time. So when you move, we can track these movements very mm -hmm. accurately. But um, if you wanted to, for example, lean around a corner mm -hmm. or maybe peek out a window, mm -hmm. it used to be that your head was sort of just fixed in space, but now you can actually move to the left or the right. You can actually lean in forward and look at the table and get a really up close view. And this actually adds not only a great level of comfort, but also some new gameplay dynamics. And it's just a totally immersive way to experience the world. Yeah, that is. It is. <laughs> so with positional tracking, uh, we're using a external camera with uh, tracking IR LEDs on the headset. And we're actually able to infer the position of the uh, Oculus Rift and the player mm -hmm. um, in a much wider you know, field of view, basically effectively tracking your position anywhere in this mm -hmm. new three degrees of freedom. Um, so the original prototype, again, was three off. Um, the new prototype is six off Crystal Cove. Mm -hmm. And that really does increase uh, not only immersion, but comfort. It mm -hmm. makes for a much better experience. And it also opens up new gameplay opportunities. You know, we talk about peeking around a corner. Sure. That's not something you could do before. So we're definitely excited to get this into the hands of content creators over time, uh, see what they come up with. Low persistence. Okay. So low persistence is a really key breakthrough. With low persistence, you can entirely or almost entirely eliminate motion blur from the display. And a lot of people think that motion blur is dependent on you know, how fast the panel can switch. It turns out that the way that our brain perceives displays, it's very different from how our, how our eyes see the world is a lot different from what we show on displays. And it starts to break down when you use it for virtual reality. With OLED technology, we're able to eliminate pixel switching time entirely. But that isn't the silver bullet for motion blur. You're actually still left with something mm. called jutter. Okay. Um, and we're getting slowly into the technical, or very quickly into the technical yeah, details yeah. here. But at the end of the day, low persistence makes it so we're, we can eliminate all of the jutter um, mm -hmm. using a, a mix of software and hardware technology. Mm -hmm. And that means you get a more realistic image. Uh, it's far more correct. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it improves the visual stability of the scene, allowing you to track objects mm -hmm. very accurately okay. in the world which again makes for a more comfortable experience sure, overall. Sure, So fluid motion with no latency. Well, not or, no latency, but a but lot less. A lot less. Uh -huh. What we've said um, in the past uh, is that we're targeting 20 milliseconds of latency for the mm -hmm. consumer version of the Rift. The, the demos that you're going to see today are somewhere between 30 to 40 milliseconds of latency. Mm -hmm. That is a significant reduction from even previous demos. The HD prototype we showed at E3 was running uh, more in the ballpark of 50 to 60. Mm -hmm. So we're on this track toward 20 sure. milliseconds. And, and what we really want to do is get even lower, obviously, mm -hmm. because that's where the magic of VR starts to really like break through. And you drop in, there is no latency, and you do get that incredible sense of presence. Of course, you yeah. feel like you're there. With the left stick here, you can actually mm -hmm. control where oh, you're okay. going. And what you want to do is fly towards the red circles. Those are okay. what shows you where the bad guys are. Oh, see I those see, guys I off see. on yep, the right? Yep, yep. So hold that left trigger and look at where those red oh, circles are. Yeah. Now let go, and you've I shot see. off a bunch of missiles. Do the same thing with that guy up towards the top. Okay. Lock onto him, keep, keep turning, there you go. Now let go of that trigger. You notice how those missiles just shot off at him? So it's a totally different experience than if you were to say, oh, I want to shoot at that guy, I have to actually aim my ship at him. You can still do that, of course, but this is a very comfortable space experience. Adds a totally different gameplay mechanic to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and if you no, look left and right, you should notice no blurring, no smudging of the scene. It's just a really, really comfortable, really fun experience. We're definitely spoiling you if you've never tried the Rift before. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty intense. <laughs> Yeah, so how far are we from the consumer version? <laughs> That's the, the, the question <laughs> everyone wants to know. Uh, we have a lot more magic, a few more tricks up our sleeve uh, mm -hmm. before we're ready to announce the release date of the consumer version. But I think what we're excited about, especially right now, is that 2014 is going to be a big year for VR, both mm -hmm. on the hardware side, but also on the content side. Mm -hmm. um, so. so on the content side, how many developers are you working with? Um, 
So we've sold um, about 50,000 uh, Oculus Rift development kits to date, uh -huh. give or take. Um, that's incredibly exciting. Sure, you know, the Kickstarter, sure. we had about 7,500 dev kits. So we've had seen an incredible number of developers show up uh, since the mm -hmm. original Kickstarter. And we're seeing developers from around the world. Almost any video game studio, or frankly, almost any industry you can think of is using the Rift in some way, shape, or form. So, um, I think Ford announced recently, maybe mm. here at CES, that they're using the Rift in some of their simulation huh. and demos. Um, if you had gone to the Detroit Auto Show, there were Rifts everywhere. Um, so we're seeing the Rift used in a ton of different verticals, whether it's mm. film, sports, education. And I think that's what's actually most exciting about VR in general, Rift especially, but it really is this platform for all sorts of new interactive mm -hmm. experiences, and it really is this new disruptive medium that can really revolutionize the way we do a lot more than just games. Sure. But we're super passionate gamers, and that's why we often show so many game prototypes, because of course. we think it really is sort of the killer app for games. Yeah, but the non-gaming applications are definitely interesting. Absolutely. And, and the fact that you've got you know, developers from companies in every industry, you said automotive, and I imagine medical, and you know. Simulation and training is a really big sure, one, actually, yeah. Sure. Military? Military is always interested. You know, we, we have, what we try to do is be as open as possible. So if you, say, want to develop an Oculus Rift or a VR game or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, you can grab a dev kit from our website, you can download the SDK. There's no NDAs you have to sign or anything like that. So we do try to have this really open platform uh, where anyone can dive in and get involved. And I think that's a big reason why um, Oculus, I think, has been so successful thus far is really the community um, mm -hmm. and the people around us who've built great content, who've supported the idea, who've helped us really get where we are, even back you know, in the crowdfunding days. Um, sure. It's been incredible to see all the, the outpouring of support. Yeah, I mean, it sounds great, it sounds yeah. great. What, what's the retail price that you're at? You're <laughs> <laughs> so we're targeting um, in the ballpark of $300. The, uh -huh. the dev kit's about, well, the dev kit is $300. We want to be in that $200 to $400 price range, ideally, for the consumer version. Um, you know, making it very wearable and affordable has always been a key part of the vision mm -hmm. of the company. If we build something that's $5,000, $10,000, $100,000, it's just not exciting, sure, right? Sure. Consumer VR is where the magic is. Um, and it's not just about audience, it's that we want anyone who's interested in VR to be able to go out and grab a unit and have fun. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's really important to us to make it affordable so that everyone can get involved. It was a draw. That's okay. good. <laughs> it could have been a defeat. Okay. You did, you did good. For like your I first time, that's amazing. That much, so. If you practice between this and next CES, I'm sure you could come back with a victory. That's, awesome. You ready to come yeah, back to yeah, CES? Yeah. All right, here we go.